Hi guys, how's it going? And welcome yet to another Swift tutorial. I'm just kidding, it's gonna be serious. All right guys, today I wanna share with you a tool that is very useful if you are developing professionally. And if you do not know this tool, this tool is called NetFox, all right? As you can see on my screen, this uh, library or this tool provides you an interface for you to debug um, your API calls uh, in the app itself, all right? So what it means is that if you are making certain API calls and uh, you know maybe an API call failed and you know because of that, uh, you are saying some unexpected behavior, at least you're able to uh, shake your phone or your device and this little um, screen pops up and shows you uh, what is the JSON response or the status code they are receiving from your backend so that you can know who to blame, all right? <laughs> okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna show you how you can integrate that into your app and how this might really value add to your uh, everyday workflow, okay? So I'm going to uh, download this uh, one inside my uh, downloads folder first, and I'm gonna show you why I'm gonna do that, all right? So, oops, not this one. All right, so let me bring in a empty um, project over here. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how we can integrate that inside here. And uh, currently this is called debugging demo. So it's just a blank uh, Xcode project. The only thing that I've done is to, hooked up, uh, is to hook up a button over here that says tap me. So I've hooked uh, hook up, <laughs> hook up a uh, IB action over here. As you can see, it says button did tap. Okay, other than that, uh, I've uh, not added anything else. And I'm going to launch another view controller each time the button is being tapped. All right, so I'm just gonna create another one over here. So class, let's call this second view controller. So UI view controller. So view did load, super dot view did load. And I'm just going to change the background color to yellow so that uh, we can make a distinction. And also uh, in the view did appear method, super dot view did appear um, animated. I want to make an API call. All right. So I'm going to use uh, maybe let's see json placeholder.typicode. So this allows me to make some um, fake API calls. So again, I'm going to use the uh, the user's endpoint over here. So it's quite short, just an array of 10 items. So I think this should be pretty fast. All right, so let me just uh, hook this up now. So let's call this um, private func, make API call. And we want to call this function inside the view the appear method. Okay, so let's uh, let's do that right now. So URL session dot shared dot data task. Uh, okay, maybe let me use this one instead. URL so dot init. Um, I think let's init with a string. All right, so let me just paste that over here. So maybe uh, let URL string equals to this one here, and then let's paste this in and then let's uh, bring it to the next line data response and error okay so I'm going to um, create the models for this so I'm going to do everything inside uh, this file over here so strut this will be let's call this users response okay and I want this to conform to decodable Okay, so let's see how the payload looks like. It's going to uh, accept an array of objects. So maybe let's just have the name and the email, which are both strings, okay? Name and email. So this will be let users. Do I have that? Let users. No, it's gonna give me an array. So um, let me do it this way. Um, let users, so strut, user, let name and let email is of type string and uh, i don't think i can do it this way um i you know what guys let me just do it this way instead okay so they're gonna receive an array of users okay so i'm gonna assume that this api call is going to pass all right and then i'm going to let users equals to json decoder dot decode uh, an array of users 
from data and I'm going to force unwrap it because I'm going to assume that it's going to pass and I'm just going to print the users on the console okay so inside over here button did tap I'm going to create my VC which is the second view controller let's initialize it and let's uh, simply present it okay so true nil let's just uh, run the app and let's see if it's working oh okay I have to do a try so I'm gonna force unwrap everything because I know that it's going to work okay but please don't do that in a production app okay so I have my um, simulator over here so hitting tap me is gonna open up uh, this new VC and uh, oops it's not calling because I forgot to hit call the resume uh, method so let's do that again tap me and I believe we see this bunch of uh, information here all right so I'm going to show you how we can uh, integrate uh, NetFox into our app over here so let me close this and there are a couple of ways you can do the integration. You can do it via CocoaPods. You can use it use a cartilage, which I've not done used that before. Or you can do it manually. So I think uh, I want to do it manually. So I, I'm pretty sure you're very familiar uh, with using CocoaPods, but I'm going to do it manu manually this time. All right? I'm going to show you how I can do that. So um, I've already downloaded the um, the library into my folder over here. So I have this netfox dash develop. So let's open up this one over here. And inside you see uh, this files over here. And I think based on the instruction um, for manual, we just have to copy uh, the three folders over here call iOS and OS X. Um, oops, I think, uh, yeah, if you are targeting iOS, we can, we just need to copy these two folders without the OS X. So let's do that right now. So there are a few ways I can do it. The first thing I can do is to just uh, drag the whole thing. All right, is to just drag this two thing into the project itself. So that will work, but I don't want to do that. Okay, I'm going to do it a bit. Oops, I'm going to do it a little bit differently. So what I want to do instead is to create another um, framework. Okay, and I'm going to call this uh, NetFox. All right, so just hit the finish button here. And then this will create a folder for me that says NetFox over here. So what I want to do now is to copy these two folders, okay, into this, um, into this NetFox folder that I've created instead, all right? Okay, so uh, you're going to ensure that uh, copy items if needed is being checked. And then let's just hit the finish button, all right? So we see that this NetFox folder is created when I created the, the framework target. And let's just copy those two folders inside. Okay, so once that is done, let's just hit the play button to make sure that the simulator is compiling correctly. And I believe it is. It says build succeeded here. And let's start to integrate. Okay, so what we want to do is that we need to come to the app delegate and we can import our framework which we just created, which is NetFox. All right. So if you had uh, dragged those two photos into your main project, you don't need to do this. Okay, so this is. Um, just personal preference okay and we need to go to the did finish launching with options function and we have to start this netfox service so it's nfx.shed instance a singleton uh, let's just call it dot start okay so this is quite dangerous if you are to do it this way because what this means is that in your production app this will also initialize netfox which you probably don't want your end users to see your JSON response, right? So what you want to do is that you want to check. So if debug, the, oops, if debug, I think that's a, and if I think, yeah. So we want to just wrap this inside this environment. Okay, so what that means is that when you come over here and you do edit skim, okay, so you notice that inside this build configuration, you have the debug and the release, all right? So if uh, you're, you're building your app on release, this, uh, this start function will not uh, be caught, all right? So you just have to be careful about that. Okay, so now that we are done with this, let's continue to just run the app and let's see uh, how NetFox works, okay? So I'm going to hit the tap me button over here. So you can, you can see that the API call has been fired. And what I need to do is to shake the app. So uh, you can't really see this, but on the menu under device, there is this function that says shake. So when I click on that, 
Netflix will show up. All right, you will see this little um, view controller coming up. And uh, we have made one request over here. So as you can see, it's 024, that's 1224 AM. All right, so I can only do these videos when my kids are asleep. <laughs> All right, so you can see that we made a, a, HTTP, a HTTP, HTTP get request and uh, the request header and bodies are empty. But what we are really interested in is the response as well as the uh, status code, all right? So this is quite useful, especially, you know, um, when you're working and your QA is like, hey, the feature is breaking and you're wondering why did that happen? You know, you'll, you'll be like, hey, it works on my computer. <laughs> it must be your phone that is not working. Not to worry, just launch NetFox and you can check out the response to see if your backend is uh, not doing the right thing, okay? So this is where you can see the exact payload uh, from the API call. All right, one more thing that I think is pretty cool as well is that um, over here inside this, um, let me see, inside this gear icon over here, you're able to tap on this share session locks. So right now on the simulator, when I click on that, nothing is going to happen. But if you're on a real device, I believe this is going to open up your, your default email app, which allows uh, you to uh, send uh, the locks to a specific email. Okay, so maybe you can send this to your backend engineer. All right, so that's another thing you can do as well. So for, let me just uh, show it to you. So now that we know that this uh, API call is working already, let me just come back here again. And whenever I make this, uh, this whenever I uh, load this, uh, sorry, whenever I hit this button, I want to be able to see the logs. And you can actually do that. So let me show, it, show you how you can do that. So import netfox. And then I can do, um, let's do nfx, which stands for netfox.shared instance. And then there's this function that says get session lock. All right, so, so basically, you know, on your debug build, you can program a button somewhere to, you know, when you hit that, you can uh, actually uh, get the session locks as well. But notice that this returns a data object. So let, let's say over here, it returns an optional data. All right, okay, so what it means is that let's unwrap this if let data equals to this. And then we can print out the string value. How do we do that? Let's do string value equals to string. And then you can pass in the data here. And then you have to encode this with UTF-8. All right, so print string value. All right, so that so now we know that this is already working. I'm not going. I'm just going to uh, comment this out now, okay? And let's just run this on the simulator one more time, and let's see what this prints out, okay? So tap me. Obviously, at the start we have not made any API call, so uh, this data is going to be nil. So we're not. We're, I'm going to put a breakpoint on line twenty three, okay? And then let's hit the tap me. Nothing is going to happen because no API call made here. Okay, I'm going to dismiss this view controller and I'm going to hit the tap me button one more time. And this time it's this data is not going to be nil because previously we made this API call. All right, so let's do that again. Hit the tap me button. This time notice that a uh, breakpoint lands on uh, line 23. Let's just get rid of it and hit the play button and let's see what it shows up on our console. Okay, it's exactly the locks that, um, that, uh, will be sent if you are to hit that uh, share locks thing and uh, technically you can you know even build some um, functionality over here to auto send to a specific um, email or even you know to, uh, share it to some kind of slack channel as well I, I believe there are some possibilities to do that so yep that's all i have for you guys i hope that uh, you have learned something valuable and i hope that this would uh, make you a slightly more efficient developer. All right, that's all I have for you and I'll see you in the next one.